How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to episode 13 of the Sick Podcast with your host, That Leaves Fan. We have quite a few things to talk about, a couple games to review, and the Leafs are in Sweden. But before we get to any of that, producer, roll the tape. Turn up your volume. Because you're about to listen to the Sick Podcast. With That Leafs Fan. They score! They score! Holy Mackinac! They score! Morgan Riley! Mo, Mo, Mo Riley! The Leafs have won it! They're going to the second round! Do you believe this? Holy Mackinac! The sickest Toronto Maple Leafs podcast. It's gonna be sick. Welcome back to another episode, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you guys are doing well. Thank you very much for tuning in before I get into anything. The Toronto Maple Leafs are in Sweden. They are overseas in Europe, and they're going to be having some very bizarre start times, along with the Ottawa Senators, the Detroit Red Wings, and the Minnesota Wild. The NHL has sent these four teams to Europe. There's going to be, I think, one game per day starting from today, Thursday, then there's one Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. The Leafs play Friday and Sunday. On Friday, they're going to be facing off versus, I believe it is the Detroit Red Wings at 2 p.m., so midday tomorrow. And then we get to wake up Sunday at 8 a.m. to watch the Toronto Maple Leafs play the Minnesota Wild. Um, A thought that just went through my head immediately was, why aren't we playing the Senators? But The NHL has a weird way of building the schedule, so I won't even get into that. But it's a pretty big event for several Leafs players. Uh, There is a lot of Swedes uh, on the Leafs. There's David Kampf, there's John Klingberg, which we'll get to. And more notably, there's William Nylander, who has bought apparently 90 to 100 tickets uh, for his family to show up to these games. And it's it's, kind of wholesome. I mean... His grandmother is finally going to get to watch him play in the NHL, which I, I don't know. I thought that was really cool. Um, I mean, hey, if this is going to make Nylander play even better, if that's even possible, go for it. So be it. Um, this guy's playing out of his mind. And the first thing I wanted to start off before I get into any of the game recaps is Nylander's contract situation. I've been thinking about this one a lot. And I don't know. In the offseason, there was talks of signing him. I think he wanted north of $10 million, and the Leafs were stuck at eight. Um, Yeah, it's definitely going to be more than eight. Uh, This guy is insane. He is on a 15-game point streak. Um, He can't possibly be on a longer point streak because the Leafs have only played 15 games. And he's actually the first player in Leafs history to be on a streak this long to start the year. And I believe there is, I want to say 20, no, there's 15 more. uh, He Sorry, he becomes the 15th player all time. I don't know who keeps track of this, honestly. Some of these stats in the NHL just, they make me, I'm like, who sat there and wrote down or went to go and research all of this? But What I'm trying to say is Nylander is the 15th player in NHL history to start on a 15-game point streak. It's pretty cool. It's very cool. Um, And it's very important because he's a part of the Leafs' core, and we need him to be ideally like this all the time. Now, obviously, the streak won't last, maybe, unless it does. That would be great. Um, But Nylander's been an absolute pleasure to watch. He is generating plays. I mean, like he's always done, Nylander has always been a a player who is very well at protecting himself despite his what comes off as size, like he's not that big. Um, he's very good at protecting the puck. He's very good at creating plays out of nothing. And the, the, the guy can shoot. He can shoot. He can stay in front of the net. He's, he's going to get paid, and he's going to get paid a lot. And the Leafs are going to have to figure it out because we have to pay him. I, I would be devastated for the Leafs to lose Nylander for nothing. Uh, unfortunately... Well, unfortunately, uh, the Leafs do need a scapegoat. And the Nylander, for quite a while, I want to say, like, he's he's been either really cherished or really unappreciated. And there's no in between. And I'm talking in terms of the Leafs fan base. Um, There's people that really like him. There's people that really don't. Um, This year, I think everyone likes him, even the, the haters of Nylander. 
are like, okay, no, this guy's legit. Um, and that means the blame now has to fall on someone else. And unfortunately, that someone else right now is Mitch Marner. Um, I don't understand the backlash he's getting or there, there's just, I've been seeing like so many people like just trashing Marner. Um, like, what are you doing? The, the, it's, it's so funny. Like in a sense, I understand it because the standards are so high and they're getting paid so much. Um, but at the same time, the people are bashing Marner like he's been absolutely useless. He's over a point a game, which if that's terrible, I'll take it. <laughs> I mean, I love Marner. I'm, I'm, I'm biased for this. I love Mitch Marner. I think when he's at the best of it, like at the top of his game, he is arguably the best Leaf I have ever seen. Um, but yeah, there has to be a scapegoat. He does have to... He has, he has to get a little better. There's, there's something that's been a bit off about his game. He's kind of like very... Um, some, we're used to seeing Marner consistently noticeable, consistently um, being the heart of the team. He has had a bit of a struggle to start the season, but I'm not worried about him at all. Um, he's shown me enough in the past to... to I, I'm not batting an eye. I'm... He's going to be fine. That's not who we have to worry about. Who we do need to worry about, not worry about, just John Klingberg has been, I, I can't figure this one out. I really don't. Um, I, I've been pondering on this for like at least two weeks now, and I've given him a chance. I've tried. Um, I love defense, and I truly believe that defense is what wins you championships, I think. It is the most underrated factor in hockey. Um, you can score goals, but if you can't play defense, you're not going to win it. And John Klingberg, yikes, man. Like, let alone the fact, first of all, he has him and Ryan Reeves have the worst plus minus on the Leafs. Uh, and some people disregard the stat. Eh, I mean, to a certain extent, I get it. It's kind of like, Depends how the team is playing, but like he is like noticeably at the bottom. He's not getting points. He is he's he's just not good. He's just not good. And I, I don't like his defensive play at all. He seems just he just hasn't meshed. Maybe, maybe he's just not good. I don't know. Maybe we're still we were still looking over at the Dallas days, thinking that, you know, maybe he can find his way back and that this might be a steel contract. It's the complete contrary i would trade john klingberg for a like you know what i think the toronto maple leafs should trade john klingberg to the most famous player in the nhl which is future considerations just ship him anywhere for nothing literally uh i would much rather have four million dollars a salary cap than have klingberg it's only a year it's not that crazy but what i do want to say i do want to tip my hat to because i i Last episode, I, I went really, really off. Uh, and I was just pissed, to be honest with you. Did I overreact? Probably. Do I take any of it back? Absolutely not. Um, Max Domi, what I've come to terms with is that he had, he's not just useful anywhere you put him. You have to put him in a situation to be useful. Like, for example, you can put Matthews anywhere. He's going to be great. You can put Nylander anywhere. He's going to be great. You can put uh, Marner anywhere. He's going to be great. Max Domi is a playmaker. You have to set him up with a player who can put the puck behind the net. And Domi's going to set the play up. And he just needs a finisher on his line. And we saw it. We had a glimpse of it with Matthew Nyes. And fortunately, unfortunately, wherever way you want to look at it, I think it's a good thing. Matthew Nyes has looked absolutely stellar on the first line. Obviously. Some things you can fix, but like overall, like looking at it, I really like what Matthew Nice has been able to do on the first line. I think he meshes well with the style of play. He can keep up with Matthews and Marner. Um, like Yarn Croak was all right on that line, but like Matthew Nice has to be on the first line. Therefore, Domi cannot play with him. So you have to find another solution. And Nick Robertson with Max Domi and Yarn Croak is the line. Very, very. Probably the best third line that we've seen from the Leafs all season. And, like, I hope it sticks because 
if they're managing, if they're going to be able to keep it up, which I think they will be, they, they've they looked very, uh, like, it makes a lot of sense. Um, you have someone who's able to crash the net, someone who's going to do the work within the boards being Yarn Croak. You have Domi being the center, where he is kind of, like, driving the play. And then you have the finisher in Nick Robertson. I mean, it, it's, it, it makes perfect sense. I really enjoy the line. And... Basically, the reason I'm saying this is because I know I completely went off. I don't know if I went that off on Domi, but the point is um, I've been liking his play a lot more. He has been a little better. Now I wanted to get to the games. The Toronto Maple Leafs played on Friday night versus the Calgary Flames on home ice, followed by back-to-back with the Vancouver Canucks on Saturday. Um, Both those teams, they're both... Uh, Western Canadian teams, they are completely opposite ends of the spectrum in the NHL right now. The Calgary Flames are looking like a dumpster fire. Makes sense. They're the Flames fire. Sure. Dad jokes. Yikes. You can totally laugh at me in the comments. Go for it. And then you have the Vancouver Canucks, who are honestly probably on one of the most unexpected starts to the year that pretty much out of any team, in my opinion, they've, they've just looked unstoppable. Like JT Miller, Quinn Hughes, Pedersen, they're, they're just all over the leaderboards. I do think it calms down, but to the games, the Toronto Maple Leafs um, over the Calgary Flames, the thing I retain from it is that the Leafs finally start on time. They take control of the game. They go up 4-1, and then they manage to make a sweat in that they blew a 4-1 lead. Well, they didn't. They almost did. They were really close to blowing it. I don't know about you guys. If you were watching that game, the moment... I saw the Leafs miss their shot in the in the shootout and then saw Kadri. I'm like, oh, we're done. This is like the funniest Leaf. It's so Leaf-like to, to see a guy who's previously played for us beat us, especially in the, the scenario that we blew a 4-1 lead. So I was I was ready to like just completely lose my mind. Luckily, the Leafs find a way. Um, the Marner shootout goal, I've had some people ask me, like, do you think he went back? Do you think the puck stopped moving in the shootout? I don't know. And to be honest, I don't care. The That's not up to the Leafs um, to make the decision. It's the NHL. We know the NHL is very all over the place when it comes to the rules. They kind of change the same way the weather changes. It's very unknown. Uh, I'm not sure what it says in their book. But the Leafs find a way to get a win in that one. And then they have a, I think this was a very important two points because they played a good game and they kind of crumbled on their own, but managed to stay above water. I think that was, those two points were absolutely needed. Like if the Leafs would have lost to the Flames that night, oh my God, like that would have just created a disaster, I think. And then they play the Canucks, who are a much better team, at least stats-wise, compared to the Calgary Flames, on a back-to-back. And they probably, like, I want to, like, arguably one of their best games of the season versus the Nucks. Um, They, okay, actually, I just remembered this. The thing I liked most about the Canucks, and I heard Steve Dangle say this. um, Shout-out to him. He's, like, literally my inspiration um hey steve if ever you're watching but for once for once for once the leafs stand up for themselves um they took two penalties in like in doing in in doing so like defending themselves it it resulted to two penalties which both pucks went in like both both opportunities the canucks capitalized on luckily it was their only two goals of the game but some people might be like oh Stupid penalty resulted in a goal. No, honestly, that like the, the fact that they stuck up for themselves, I forget exactly what the play was, but they stuck up, they stuck up for themselves. And it is what we've been like begging for for so long. So I don't even care that they took a penalty. I'm just glad that they're like, penalty or not, we're gonna. Stand up for ourselves. We're going to stick up for something we didn't agree with, for one of our players getting hit, for what, like something we thought was questionable. We're going to stand up for it. We're not taking it. And good. Like, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. I could not do, take this penalty every time, 10 times a game. I don't, okay, maybe not 10. But my point being is 
if that's what your penalty is going to be, go for it. Do it. I am all for it. I'm on your side. I'll, I'll stick up and defend you on every single podcast if those are the penalties you're going to take. I don't mind. Like, that's what we've been begging to see from this team. And what's, what's good about it is they managed to get back into the game right after. So, like, if you – in like, immediately you're kind of like, ah, penalty. Damn, they result into a goal. Was it worth it? The Leafs immediately answer back both times um, when they went down because it was 1-0 Canucks, 1-1, 2-1 Canucks, and then 2-2. And the responses were relatively close. So in my opinion, I mean, it was perfect. You answered the bell. You got a penalty. You paid for it. But you didn't put your head down. You got right back up, back into the play, put yourself back into the game. It was it was amazing. I, that was, I think the Leafs game against the Canucks was one of their best performances of the season i hope it will not stand as their best performance of the season because i it's still it wasn't like phenomenal but it was it was good it was good um and i just want to see more games like that overall uh i do think the leafs have the potential to do it and that's it's when it's tough because i don't really know how to evaluate this team right now it's we're so used to the Leafs starting off very shaky in October to eventually level it out in November with like some 12 game win streak. I haven't seen that this season and I've been mentioning it a couple times. I'm kind of happy. I want the Leafs to fight for their playoff spot this year and make them no longer feel that entitlement of, Oh, we have it. Like we've locked our spot in January. We know who we're playing. Let's just chill out. Like I'd rather this team, especially with the way they're built now, I think this team can far more benefit from actually having to play meaningful games leading into the playoffs, which will make them kind of just pick up where they left off kind of thing. Um, I don't know. That's just my thoughts. I think the past, like th this season definitely feels different in terms of the way they are. Like usually around this time we have it figured out, okay, this is what the Leafs are. It's taken them a lot more time to adjust. They do have a lot of new players. To Bertuzzi, I know he didn't watch the podcast, but in case you did, I'm still very skeptical about you. But at the very least, he's putting an effort. Um, I bashed him last episode for his lack of effort, like not even lack of, like it was just not there at all. Um, he has been trying at least, which I mean, it's a pretty low standard for someone getting paid five mil. We definitely need more out of him, like a lot more, but he's trying at least like, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. We'll work on it. We're going to need to see more, but like, at least now I don't have to like scream about the fact that not only are you not playing great, but you're not even trying. Like, at least we can put that to bed for now, for now. And I hope I never have to bring it up again. Um, so a lot of things in Toronto right now. Um, something I wanted to talk about was the the level of like, and I feel like anyone could have told you this, the Leafs are clearly an offensive team who severely lack defensively. And that needs to change. That needs to change because you're just not going to go that far with this type of with this at least level of play uh when it's gonna matter the leafs are ranked i i had i'm you know what i'm not even gonna make it up i have it right next to me the leafs are currently i have it right here they are ninth in the league in goals they are 10th in the league shots on goals sixth in the league in power plays shooting percentage and faceoffs also tied 10th in the league so offensively, there's really not that big of an issue. Where the problem becomes is, is the defensive game. And it's not just a defense, although the Leafs' defense is like mediocrity at best. But our penalty kill is 28. That's brutal. Brutal. Because this team does take quite a few penalties. And if it's that bad, it needs to, like, it has to be worked on. And goals allowed is exactly the same as our goals for per game on average, which is 3.53, placing us tied 25th in the league. 
that is not good enough. And Keith said it. He said it's it's just completely unacceptable to to be allowing this amount of goals. Yeah, a hundred percent. If you're letting in like three and a half goals in a game, let's say on an average within two games, if you're letting in seven goals, you're it's very hard to win both like one of it, like especially both of them. They need to tighten up. They have to tighten up. Like it's not normal that a team that is currently eight, five, and three has let in like more goals than what like the Oilers like it's it's brutal it's not good enough and they need to improve on that I I think there's a trade coming I, I've been hearing a lot of talks of um Nikita Zadorov depends for what like I don't want them to overpay because they have tendencies to do that I, I don't know what it is about like I that's that's what worries me about the team and I'll, I'll probably end it on this the thing that worries me about this team is that I don't know what exactly the problem is we just all know there's a problem and that's not a good spot to be in when um talking about like this big of an aspect of the game it's like well what's wrong with us defensively well we let in way too many goals we cannot defend when we take a penalty we have very hard time defending overall and it's not just one person it's not like i let, let's say although i think klingberg is a huge factor in this because he is god awful he's not the only one he's not and i think even if you remove klingberg from the situation maybe it improves a bit but you're not solving the problem there like the leafs really need to reform this core granted we do have injuries but that that's the NHL. Like I won't feel bad for it, and I'm not going to use that as justification because, quite frankly, I think even if the Leafs are completely healthy, the the, the defense is still pretty medi mediocre. It's it's just not that great. Um, when you have forty million dollars and four players in your offense, you're bound to be lacking somewhere, and where we are lacking is defense. Um, I I think they definitely need to to maximize on any any way they possibly can. My voice just cracked. Amazing. Just like the Leafs defense. Um, they, they need to find some level of solution and hopefully, like, hopefully sooner than later because it's, it's like I said, it's just not good enough. Um, but it's still very early on into the season. Like I have made many judgments about this team despite saying that I wouldn't judge any team until the 20 game mark. But we are approaching it. We're 15 games into the season. It's We're starting to really like have for the most part, like an established idea of, okay, who's who, who has a chance of making the playoffs, who's a lock of making the playoffs, who is like God awful, like already eliminated. Like you, you, you have, you, you can make like your assessment, like not quite, but like we're getting there. And my Leafs assessment is, at this point is simply, we have no problems in scoring goals, which we shouldn't because we have a lot of high octane offensive players and some of the best ones in the league. Love it or hate it, it's true. And they are bottom of the barrel defense. And we all knew this coming in. Um, we knew that that's what it was going to be. But I'm interested to see what the Leafs are going to do here. I think there is, like, I don't want the. I don't want the lack of trade talks. Uh, sorry, I don't want the trade talks or like thoughts of making a move dissipate because of a couple of wins that we got. Obviously, right now we're in Sweden. Um, we need we need three out of four points here, um, and I think it's very doable. Um, they're early games, but. Both teams are on a back-to-back. -back. The Wild are going to be on a back-to-back -back on Sunday, and the Wings are going to be on a back-to-back -back tomorrow because they're playing today versus the Senators. So these are like points we can't afford right now based on how tight the like the standings are. They need the points. They really do. Um, minimum three out of four, I would hope. Uh, hopefully four out of four. But we'll start with tomorrow when the Leafs play the Wings, and then we're going to see how it goes at the 8 a.m. start on Sunday. But that is going to be it for today's episode, guys. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. If you have any feedback, feel free to drop it in the comments. I would love to hear what you guys think of this team. I want to know who you guys have been enjoying on team watching, who is an X Factor, just anything. Tell me anything you want to hear 
or what tell me anything sorry that you would like to say about the team i would love to hear it i'm all ears whether you're a leafs fan whether you're a leafs hater whether you're just listening to the podcast to support and if you're that person thank you so much you're a goat um but yeah that is going to be it for this episode guys thank you very much for watching i hope you did enjoy the next episode is likely going to be on monday to recap what's happened in sweden um but for now Please make sure to hit that subscribe button. If you enjoyed, drop a like, a comment, leave a review if you're listening over on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Much love. Go Leafs go till the day we die, no matter what they do. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the sick podcast with that Leafs fan on YouTube, Facebook. Google Play and Apple Podcasts.